All right. Uh, thank you everybody for joining. Uh, let's talk Cardano. Uh, my name is Eddie Cara. Uh, you may all might know me as Platypus Alpha. I'm going to get into the presentation in just a bit. I just like having this one-on-one -on -one personal moment in the, in the beginning. You know, I am human. I am an individual. Um, but my contact info is right here, and I'll share that again towards the end of the presentation. I'm going to go ahead and I'll also hold off questions till the very end. Um, but, you know, as you ask them, you can ask them throughout the presentation and throughout me speaking. Um, I can see them, but I will actually be holding off to answering any of those towards the end. And we're going to cover a wide variety of things with Whimsy uh, and how we really, you know, take on fractionalized uh, real estate and the world of uh, real world assets. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, just a moment. All right. So with Whimsy, we are fractionalized real estate. Uh just to sum this up a little bit, is we are just taking real estate and the the bigness of it is, you know, different properties, different units, all of it, just fractionalizing it to different individuals who want to get in on the action. Now, a little bit about who I am. I did say I was Eddie Carp. I'm also the founder and CEO of this company of Whimsy. Um, and what we do here is some amazing magical things, hence why we called it Whimsy. Uh, but, you know, I have 10 years in technology and information systems. So I've been working at companies such as Wayfair, Bose Corp. Uh, just as recently, I've left and now do this full time that I've left the company Datadog, who did infrastructure monitoring. And, you know, we did a lot of uh, a selling of those products. And that's where a lot of where my other experiences come in. I got five years of sales and business development. Uh, what that really entails is that I built up sales teams that sold technical products. Um, and we were able to work with our customers build pipeline, and also grow out the teams on the management side and the internal portion of the company. I was able to grow out teams, not only in the United States, on the East Coast, where I was the um, the acting manager for that region, as well as Latin America. So I have a good broad reach, and you kind of see a little bit of why and how my approach is based on the United States and Latin America with Whimsy. But you know, I have access and I've had experience with all those different regions. I'm also the founder of an NFT project called Platypus Cyberpunks. I'm not going to dive into that. I just like to reference it because uh, it's a fun community and a lot of people there have a lot of like-minded um, ideas and, and ways that they think about business and they're all very entrepreneurial. So it's just, uh, I like to foster a lot of those kind of energies and a lot of, a lot of kind of those um, kind of those habits, you know, just being a business owner and, you know, doing your own thing and just, I have to throw this in there for the community, you know, don't get me started on the fondness of my, of mayonnaise uh, <laughs> from uh, other other influencers in the space who talk about, you know, banana and mayonnaise sandwiches to just randomly having jokes about mayonnaise. You know, I've, you'll, you'll see me throwing those out there every once in a while, and uh, it'll be just a good reference to, to have a laugh. Now, what is Whimsy? Overall, Whimsy is a fractionalized real estate platform. Uh, it's essentially a marketplace where you can come in as an individual investor and find properties that you want to get access to. And you can do it for as little as $100. Uh, that that essentially is giving people who have not had access to real estate before, and even more so now in the, the climate of as, as we are today, uh, haven't been able to actually access real estate. And now we're losing more and more of those opportunities as the economy just you know goes in that direction we all were uh, afraid that it was going to start heading. Now, our business model is pretty straightforward. You know, we source these properties. We go and find uh, opportunities that could have potential cash flow or potential returns. Now, we're not guaranteeing or promising any returns because fractionalizing the real estate doesn't necessarily mean that you're guaranteed anything. It just means that you get access to the same kind of opportunities that any individual landlord or a real estate investor would have access to. It still comes with the same risks, the same uh, rewards. Um, and then the same opportunities that others could have. Now, as we're sourcing these properties, we're looking for things that are going to be sitting around or at least being held for at least six to seven years. And with those properties, we're looking for long-term growth, uh, not only in the long-term leasing or renting of those properties, but also short-term, getting into the vacations and the short-term rentals, maybe even uh, corporate rentals as well. Um, the way that we acquire it is, you know, one option to purchase a property is, you know, buying, buying based on the key of the location, uh, that can cash flow. So as we're acquiring these properties, we're looking for things that can be monetized fairly quickly. Um, off the bat, we're not really going to be taking on any sort of debt. Uh, all these properties are going to be funded and acquired via the Whimsy platform, but they're going to be done in a way where we acquire these properties um, 
essentially cash offer uh, to to bring them into our ownership so that as the individuals who get onto the platform and invest with us here on these properties, they are able to actually own that much quicker uh, than being able to take on debt, getting approved for that debt, and then buying that and acquiring that property. Uh, there'll be other directions as well. You know, instead of existing property, we'll also get into building uh, new constructions. So finding a great location, maybe say for tourism or a place that needs additional housing that may be having a housing deficit. Uh, those are going to be some great locations or great opportunities that we can get into. Uh, it won't be anything off the bat that's going to be crazy. You know, we're not going to be building a new apartment complex uh, or any sort of uh, shopping mall <laughs> of, of that nature. But getting into, say, buy, you know, uh, buying some land and starting to build out some properties between like 10 to 12 units uh, or being able to uh, get into some properties and being able to build out, you know, the, the small, you know, um, bed and breakfast or vacation destination that can be rented long term um, to anybody who's interested in tour, uh, tourism in a certain location or, you know, a location that needs that housing. Now, when step four is in our business models for rent, uh, this really just means, you know, part of our five to six, six to seven year plan is to really hold these properties for long term renting. Uh, this short term or long term rental is really what we're, we're, we're gauging at. Uh, and then five is uh, we manage them. So it either be Whimsy that manages these properties uh, or we would have a third party uh, take care of it, depending on the location um, and the kind of like our reach. So if Whimsy is not in that location, but we see a great opportunity, we may actually just add that to the information of the page that you can see when you're investing on that particular property, you know, what the plans are, what the direction is for uh, managing that property and going forward. And the final piece that everybody's here interested in is distribution. You know, you're getting in as low as $100 to buy a share. You know, we're doing this all in a compliant, fully uh, securitized way. But, you know, what, you know wh where's that return? How do I get something back? You know, you're not going to be holding these properties and hoping for appreciation or hoping that we sell the property and divide out whatever that appreciation value is. You know, that is an opportunity that could happen with that five, six, seven, you know, uh, years of, of holding the property. But these properties will have a goal of having a return every month. Uh, and so that turnaround on that month to month will be essentially what you would be getting back in um, in net revenue that that property could uh, could generate. Now, you know, there's obviously some other hiccups along the road. As a founder, um, also a landlord, you will also be like a landlord for these properties. You're just a fractionalized, smaller landlord holder. So if you have 1% of that property and the place generates a good deal of income, you'll get 1% of that income shared out to you after costs and all the other fees. Uh, you know, just to be as straightforward as we can be, the distribution is not a guarantee or promise because these are all risks. These are things that we, you know, as general investing, there is a risk that you can take, but there is opportunity there as well. Now, real world assets. I'm going to hold for a second here and just kind of dip the toe in before we get to the next slide. Real world assets is a gigantic uh, conversation to have, right? It could be just having, you know, commodities on the market. It could be um, getting into Pokemon cards. It could be uh, anything, honestly, you know, it's a real world asset, anything that you can hold that could have a potential value and being able to divide that out to anybody who wants to hold on to it or own it. It's a real world asset, just like that is. Uh, gold could be one, diamonds could be another. There's no, there's no really fine definition of what needs to be an asset. If it's an asset, it's generally something in the real world that you can share the ownership or be able to just kind of hold and maybe get appreciation or re depreciation on that object. You know, paintings are a pretty big asset that people donate to museums. So the, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of uh, a myriad of different things that could be an actual real world asset. Obviously we are working in the real estate space. So a bit more about what that is and what that entails. You know, like where do our RWAs come from? Well, we are working with properties. These are real world locations. These are places that people live in or people that rent out for a period of time. And those, those locations need to have an actual representation. We can't just have a digital version of it online and trying to find a way to guarantee that it exists or that you have actual ownership of it. So we here in the United States, Whimsy, will be operating under the uh, regulations and compliances that the SEC as well as uh, FINRA provide us. So with those regulations, that allows us to go through security and actually register this with a Form 1A and, and be able to register this so you can publicly see it and even search it on the Edgar. 
Uh, what this does is it allows everything to be very transparent. So we will be able to say what we're going to be doing, what this fundraising for this property is going to be, what it's going to be used for, what the capital will be divided out into, what the costs are. Everything will be essentially taken um, uh, taken uh, to, to a certain kind of level of, of visibility that you'll be able to see everything ahead of time. And then once that's done, we'll get everything done with our broker agent where they're going to be our FINRA as well as our transfer agent. So as they're reviewing these properties, they're making sure that we're in compliance with what FINRA uh, offers. If the if everything's in compliance, then we get approved. We're able to list that on the platform. And then from there, anybody who buys a particular share of that, uh, our transfer agent will be able to take that information. This will be your KYC. And being able to take that and actually register that you are the owner of that percentage or that share that you've purchased. And then once we have all these uh, processes completed from the security to the FINRA review, now we have a property that has a contract. This is a legal entity on the, uh, the EDGAR or the SEC or FINRA registration. Well, FINRA is really uh, the compliance piece and then security is really just registering and making sure that we've stated that it's a security. Now that we have that security, well, what do we do with it? Now that we are able to utilize that, we want to fractionalize it. We want to say that uh, Timmy over here, <laughs> uh, uh, the Timmy over here has the uh, you know ten percent. I wanted to buy thirty percent, and Jessica wanted sixty percent. Well, there's no real way to do that uh, evenly uh, without getting into that fractionalizing portion. And what that really means is that we're able to take this contract, the security that says this property is a hundred percent of something, and the something is a real estate business. That's exactly what that contract really represents is that this property is inside of a business. This business is now issuing out shares of ownership, and then you're able to buy some of those. So as we issue those out, what it really looks like is the real estate property, we turn into security, we get it re reviewed, and we get everything ready with our broker agent to list it. And then we start piecing off little pieces as people purchase. So if somebody wanted, you know, Timothy, want, Timothy uh, Timmy wanted 5%, you know, Jessica wanted 2%, I wanted to buy 20%, you could do so. And this, by dividing it out in the ownership, is very much like buying uh, stocks in a company. Uh, the very much thing is that the company owns this property and it manages it. So as every individual starts to own a little bit of this property, we're now fractionalizing and everybody gets a little bit of access to it. And you know, obviously the whole point of it is to put it in as a rental property so that there is some sort of residual that could come back uh, to the holders. Now, tokenization, this part is... Uh, where some were may say unnecessary, and I think uh, really the argument here is, you know, where's the value in that, and what actually do we do we get from being able to tokenize these real estate properties and take these shares and this process and take it to the next level of what traditionally has been very uh, convoluted, complex, and what I've been learning from this whole process, kind of over-engineered. Uh, but realistically, what we're able to do is we can take those securities. Um, and as they're being sold and divided, we can start taking all of those shares as they're being sold and converting them with metadata on the Cardano blockchain and being able to convert them to tokens. Now, these are asset-backed tokens. So we would have tokens that are actually considered security tokens because as you're purchasing these tokens, you are actually purchasing shares of this. This is a one-to-one -one representation of the shares available for that individual property. Uh, and as every one of these tokens represented, you know, it's just a little share of that property. Now, before I get down into a close review, uh, I do want to go back here and just really elaborate here. The, the benefit of being able to secure, you know, take these security tokens and make them a digital equivalent to a real world asset is it gives us the ability of speed, verification, security, and authentic, uh, authenticity. Uh, being able to send these back and forth between others on the platform because it, it will be a market, uh, you have the benefit of having those transactions much quicker than being able to purchase and then try to find somebody who sells them. Uh, if you've ever been inside of a partnership of owning real estate, you'd have to have somebody buy you out. Uh, it's a long legal process. A lot of contractual, contractual obligations are in there. But being able to create it as a tokenized um, asset you're able to buy and sell these fairly quickly amongst each other of those who are interested to make offers or to sell them on the open market. That gives you that simplicity, but also that speed. Now, the other side of that, that security piece, it's much more secure in this way where 
you would actually be able to verify the ownership of these tokens very quickly on a digital landscape and essentially the Cardano network and being able to pull the information of who owns what at what time and being able to evenly distribute what the what the monthly income that you are essentially earning in that particular moment uh, very easily across the board. So being able to have these tokens, own these tokens, and being able to leverage them for those, those values. Now for the authentication and verification, we could utilize these tokens in many ways, but because the ownership is attached to it, you'll be able to do interesting things. Um, not going to get too ahead of myself, but you know, being able to take these tokens and say, hey, I want an X amount of this property. I want to stay in this vacation property for, say, X amount of days. You, the amount of tokens that you have based on the amount of days you want to do, you could do that based off an offset of price or how much a night would cost uh, and being able to actually leverage your tokens in a much more interesting way or even being able to have benefits. So say these tokens would be partnered up with another uh, business that may be associated to that rental property or uh, another entity that's in that, this, that particular area, you could say, hey, I own these tokens. These belong to me. I'm part of this property. Well, maybe I get a free parking and you'd be able to benefit from parking in that location instead of paying that 10 to $20 for, for parking in that area or even getting a general discount in the area because you are technically somebody who is an owner of a property in that location. So there's a lot of merit to being able to tokenize these and be able to benefit from something that an owner would get normally, uh, but from having these tokens and being able to access that very easily and being able to verify it uh, very quickly. Now, diving in deeper into a closer look of the platform, uh, what we're really benefiting here is we're just trying to make the UI UX experience that any age can pick it up, start using it without much guidance, as simple as possible, kind of like searching for a new apartment, but also being able to go through it, understand it, have everything that you need available to you in that moment from what the property specs are, amenities, location, is it walkable, what's the financials, any documents, and you know, are you already holding this? Are you just building up your portfolio and what, what you have there available? So things that will be very important with us, not only because of the platform, but also because uh, it is a compliant requirement is uh, KYC or know your customer. Uh, we utilize Plaid, it'll be, it's already baked into the platform. This is where we can identify verification. So we'll be able to collect user data. This is information of say your identifiable data, like a photo or an image. Uh, is alive by, you know, moving your head around like the image you see there on the left, uh, authenticating IDs, uh, being able to utilize passports or driver's licenses. They have an anti-fraud engine so they can verify the bank account, the balance, and make sure that that information is equivalent to you and the information that the bank can verify. And then also autofill and remember me, that's actually verified uh, information of you specifically. And this is a really key piece because it, also, it makes your life a little bit easier, but also makes ours um, uh, easier, but also compliant. And that keeps everything in loop so that in the future, if there's ever sort of any issue with your account, we can verify you, we can authenticate you, and we can correct anything that your account may be uh, having any security or any sort of issues with. All right, and then things here that I wanna shout out is uh, we wanna build smarter. So uh, we have partnered up with Saturn for smart contract API. Um, and execution. So what this does is it helps us reduce cost overhead so we don't have to have that overhead um, in our own cloud or in our own backend. We can scale with our business. So as we apply more properties, we have more contracts per property, we have more tokens being delivered, we can have that offloaded, that, that service or that overhead over off to uh, the Saturn solutions. And then the attentive and reliable support. I don't know if you guys have ever spoken to Avatar Nick or Avatar Chris, uh, they're always <laughs> hands on deck, ready to talk to you, always in Discord, already ready to communicate. So they've been very, very helpful throughout the integration and support of this. And the most beautiful part, you know, from a dev and a tech myself, uh, version support. As we are, you know, launching new platforms, having different uh, configurations and running the platform, we want to really focus on things like, you know, Aiken having a new distribution or maybe the back end on Cardano having a new version coming out. I want that to just kind of be synonymous with the solution and just being able to develop and continue moving forward from the, the way that we built it from that point forward. So having that version support and being able to just let that be in the background is super key to us. It makes us more efficient, much more, uh, much more, uh, I guess, happy. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
All right, and then the key piece here is transparency. So I've already mentioned that a lot of our compliance requires us to be super transparent about what information, what the property is used for, where the money is going to go, how much needs to be raised, and what that particular pieces are for that uh, funding that's going to be utilized for that property is going to be used for, as well as um, how can you check your information? How can you check who owns what? What are the documentations and any lease agreements and, and so forth based on your ownership? So uh, we put in a lot of use cases and, and solutions inside of our platform for simple tracking. You can go through your transactions. You can see the history. You can see your growth um, just from your user portfolio, and you can manage it from there. Uh, being able to have liquidity, you know, being able to increase your access to market liquidity. You can either deposit uh, ADA or USD to the platform. We have an escrow service. So as the escrow service is uh, operating, it's a licensed escrow service inside the United States. What this means is uh, we don't actually touch your money. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, what you would call DDN uh, rug proof, uh, where an entity in the United States is licensed to actually accept the capital on our behalf and your behalf. Uh, and we would actually integrate with their solution to uh, facilitate the buying and selling. And then they would take care of um, any sort of the transactions being completed, verification of the transaction, and then also passing the information off onto our transfer agents so that they can actually apply your information or remove your information from a particular asset they may have bought or sold. And then we have the efficiency here, you know, improve the transfer of ownership and reporting via our automated smart contracts. That's super key. As you know, as you're buying and you're selling, this information is just collected and sent off to uh, the, the parties at B that I just referenced. And then lastly, secure the transparency and security. Uh, know your transactions is going to be a much bigger play uh, in the future. It's something that we want to get ahead of. So not only know your customer, but also know these transactions uh, because we are not able, based on our anti-money laundering policies, we can't do business with certain portions of the United, uh, of the world. So if the United States ain't doing business with them, we can't do business with them. Uh, and what that means is that we're actually be looking to work with Cerberus uh, much more closely, and they're going to be able to track and also piggyback uh, on the wallets and different transactions between wallets so that if there's a particular user who's living or, or operating out of a particular region, uh, and then this particular wallet is being associated with some sort of scam or some sort of other fraudulent activity, we'll just blacklist the account and we will refund fully uh, all of their capital um, from whatever they're holding in that moment. It's just something to be, pro we're just trying to be proactive rather than reactive to any sort of scenario where we may have you know, a bad actor and we, 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 do, we need to act appropriately. And lastly, we will be mobile ready. Uh, it's one of our, you know, I've, I've said it to a lot of people, but it's one of my key uh, painstaking points. If you're not mobile ready, by the time you're ready to launch, you're not ready. Uh, so that's just a key piece that, you know, part of that UI UX experience, not only is desktop available, but mobile will be available once we go live. Uh, and we'll be going live fairly soon. We're just completing now the uh, full uh, series and the Form 1A for the first series. And once that's completed and ready and reviewed, like we mentioned with security and FINRA registration, uh, we'd be good to go from that point forward and we'll be able to go live from that day forward. Now, final piece here, why Whimsy? You know, just to sum everything together, because there's, you know, anybody can go out and buy real estate on their own, but not everybody can. And that's, you know, one of our key points here is the lower barrier to entry, allowing people to come into this um, uh, for as little as $100, being able to start their portfolio and, do, you know, um, get into real estate investing a little bit earlier in their investment journey and being able to get access to that as soon as possible. Uh, capital appreciation, you know, once you've got these shares, it's not only the month to month potential and revenue, uh, but it's also the property itself. If that location is, you know, booming and there's a lot of property being built around in that location, or uh, you're seeing a lot of, you know, like new developments, that property's value is going to increase that appreciation over time will also increase. And as we've seen historically in the United States, year over year, you know, you may see some ups and downs, but about every 10 years, you start to see a boom. So that's something that you can also really benefit from that, you know, at least in the United States, you'll be able to do something in that nature and be able to, you know, capitalize on that appreciation. Uh, rental income, you know, that month to month, being able to get access to rental income from a 10, 20, 30 unit apartment complex, you know, as, as we find them and source them uh, for the platform and as we grow and scale as a business, 
uh, these will be much more uh, lucrative. They'll have much more of a better opportunity uh, in return for business. The the opportunity um, the opportunity for you know the rental income long term, and also as if you grow and grow your portfolio, it just has that potential to grow very aggressively for yourself. And then finally, here are the benefits of the advantages of owning real estate. Uh, there's things like depreciation. You can apply this to your taxes, uh, you individually. Um, the beauty of that is you, you can get access to you have 5% of that property. You're able to utilize 5% to depreciate on your own personal uh, taxes. Uh, being able to benefit from things that that property would normally only allow for owners to have access to. Say, um, access to um, like some of the things we mentioned before, uh, parking maybe even an electric charge if you're going to be renting a Tesla or some other vehicle, being able to travel more, more frequently uh, because you own a little bit of that property. There's always going to be some sort of advantage that you're going to be able to get since you are now actually a legal owner of that property. And now I'm going to switch off here to a quick q and I know we got a few questions in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and answer those now. Let me zoom this in real quick. All right, so starting from the top, uh, anonymous attendee, great to see you. Let's see that you have lots of questions. Uh, will Whimsy be a solution for US, only for US borders? No, we will be international. One of our main properties uh, in the future, uh, the first actually series is actually a property in Belize. Uh, what we did is we actually bought some land out in Belize and we're actually gonna build a new, uh, two new buildings on that land and it'll be used for vacation rentals. It's right in Ambergris K. It's a gorgeous location. Lots of investment, lots of builders out there right now. Um, I have a lot of great access to individuals like that. So very interesting. Uh, in the chat, uh, actually, I just saw one. Uh, Frederico here. Thanks for the question. Hi, great presentation. Would this service be available to people from around the world or just in the U.S.? So this solution, um, we actually will allow uh, not only individuals, but also businesses at some point. Uh, to create accounts and be able to invest in these properties in the U.S. or internationally with what we're doing like in Belize or in other locations that we're planning. So you don't necessarily have to be a U.S. citizen. Anybody can invest in this, but you will need to bring your passport. Uh, there will be some KYC or, or uh, KYB, which is know your business. It'll require a little bit more uh, hands-on for the business side because you'll have to bring your TIN or you have to bring your, uh, your EIN equivalent from overseas. And uh, for taxes, there's a different documentation and setup for that. But that's something that we are going to be uh, getting ready and preparing for, uh, not only within the U.S., but internationally. May this token have a secondary market? Yeah, it, it will have a secondary. So in the initial phases, um, we will just be a purchase uh, of, of these properties. So you'll be investing and in buying the shares. Um, we are going to be working with, should, yeah, I'll say it. Uh, we'll be working with North Capital. They're our escrow service, but they also have a, it's a P-E-P-P-S, I think. And it's a way for them to also handle escrow for secondary markets. Uh, so you'll be able to buy and sell just like you would be on Robinhood or something like that with the tokens of these properties. Uh, what's the development status? Are you re already on testnet? You auditing your on-chain code? Yeah, so we're already on testnet. We're finishing up a few different code things. We're, we're reviewing a few final pieces, uh, mostly on the admin side, because I, I will be hiring individuals to help out as we go forward to source properties. Uh, we do have some other partners that want to work with us uh, for management. So we want to give access and be able to manage that access as well for our escrow and for our transfer agents. They need access to e export the user information for reporting. Uh, so there's just some final touches we're doing on the admin side. We do have a test net. Uh, this is why I brought up the Platypus Cyberpunks founder part. Uh, different groups inside of the Platypus Cyberpunks have already started testing out the Whimsy platform on Testnet. Uh, they've been telling us, giving us some good feedback. So we have live users playing around with it and giving us some feedback. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you want access, come talk in the Discord and we can, we can probably make something work. As for uh, the code auditing, we're going to get to that at some point. Um, we just want to finalize a few of the pieces, but also the people who do the code auditing also wrote our smart contracts. So it, it's kind of awesome at the same time. <laughs> um, oh, nice. Nice to see you from uh, Federico from TX Pipe. All right, awesome. Thanks, man. All right. And then back to the questions here on the, uh, the Q&A portion. 
Uh, another anonymous attendee, uh, what measures does Whimsy have in place to protect buyer, buyer's investments, especially in the volatile market conditions? Um, that one's a pretty, that's a pretty heavy one, right? Because to protect you, we, we would operate as a fiduciary, right? We would only do things that are based on your, our investor's best interest. So if we were to buy property and it's based off the funding that you guys invested with us to buy that property, we should have done and we can only operate on listing a property after we've been approved that we're in full compliance, meaning we've listed a reasonable um, opportunity that has all the information fully transparent, the location of the property, what the property is used for, how much we need it, what the money is used for, um, what documentation, what lease agreements we have. So all of those things go into play. A lot of this is investing. I can't protect your money from the market having crazy swings. It is an open market. So as the real estate market or the stock market shifts, it's it's going to be that kind of risk taking that you would take. You know, even an opportunity that could look amazing on paper and look amazing on that opportunity. Um, you know, the things that we can do um, is really press our management team or ourselves because we'll be managing a certain amount of locations. Um, to really lease those properties and fill those those apartments, right? So that is the best thing that we can do to make sure that anybody's investment is actually having the best chance to succeed. Uh, can't guarantee anything, but you know we're, we can do all the right things of, hey, if nobody's renting this because ah, it looks like the bathroom should be updated, we'll update those bathrooms and we'll make sure that's part of um, we'll make sure that's part of the opportunity before we we really lease it to anybody. And we'll, you know, we'll do our best to to get as many people in the door as we can. So that's, that's really like uh, the best thing we can do for long-term rentals. As for vacation rentals um, or short-term, that's very seasonal, depending on the tourism and the location, but we do a lot of research ahead of time uh, before we get into any sort of particular location. So the Belize area that we've looked into, we're already looking into that area for almost a year. Um, looking at year over years, you can see on the Whimsy Estates uh, Twitter account, uh, we actually put down a few threads based on why we're in Belize and what we're what that opportunity looks like, and the growth of their tourism from 2019 even through COVID um, was growing pretty pretty well and pretty stack uh, pretty uh, consistently, which is kind of amazing honestly. So you know that those are those kind of things that we look into. Uh, I hope that answers your question. But there's so many things that we could do as a as an individual. All right. And just so anybody needs my info one more time, it's there, but I'm also gonna stop sharing real quick and just have that here on the side. Uh, to answer any other questions, let's see, uh, for rent type properties, do you distribute each rent to investors in a form of a stable coin as seen on other real estate tokenizing platforms? That's a fantastic question. Uh, Delphine, Delphine, you can correct me in the comments later, but, uh, that's a great question. The thing is, the fact that we went down this longer process to be much more compliant and uh, registered as a security, the choice is yours. Uh, we, we've actually put it into the platform that you can choose how you want it to be distributed. If you want ADA, you get ADA. If you want stable, you get stable. If you want it to be in USD, you can have it in USD and you can withdraw it to your bank account directly using Plaid Connect. Um, but the only thing that I can't, I can't give you is if we had to do a refund or if we had to uh, remove a property and you know issue a refund based on maybe like a clawback of the tokens or maybe the house caught on fire and we had to pull an in insurance, right? That kind of capital has to be in USD because it's through our escrow. Um, and that's just for us to stay compliant. But any sort of like dividend that comes from these properties, you can have it any way you'd like. Uh, Colorado real estate agent here, long time ADA holder. <laughs> Um, and would love to help with this. Where can I get in contact? Right here. Uh, I have an email. Uh, you can find me on uh, on Twitter. Also, if you go to Platypus Cyberpunks, uh, you can find me there on the Discord. I'm always online. Uh, what I'm going to love is that there's going to be a opportunity for just click a button, sell us your house. Uh, so if you want to start bringing properties to us because you can't find buyers in your area, but it's much easier to maybe sell to a hundred or a thousand individuals who might be interested in that property. Yeah, have a conversation with us. Uh, I'm more than happy to, to communicate. Colorado is a great location. Um, can you explain again, how do you ensure ongoing compliance and regulatory adherence for managed properties? So for managed properties, there's gonna be a few things. So there's the finance side. Uh, for that, the compliance of the finances, we have to have somebody always doing 
some sort of due diligence with uh, the bookkeeping. So every month, if somebody's paying rent, we have to document that, who did it, um, if they're behind, if they're not, um, and being able to consistently record that over the course of the year. We can't actually buy a property intended for rental unless they've had two years of, uh, of documented bookkeeping. Uh, so if they can't do it, <laughs> we can't buy it. Uh, that's that's pretty much how it is. So if anybody's in there, like the real estate guy, if there is any um, you know, bad history or they, if there's some gaps in the history, we can't talk about that property. We can't even buy that property. Uh, so make sure your books are up to date on that. As for other things that are compliant, you know, when we go through the security portion, it's really just to list it and to put the opportunity together of what we're actually going to be listing and what it's for. The FINRA side is really where the compliance comes in. They're going to review the property. They're going to review the documentation. They're going to review to see if the bookkeeping has been updated and, and, and consistent for at least the last two years. Um, and then they're also going to uh, review our finances. And we actually have to go through audits. Uh, I'm actually going through an audit right now. It's part of the process for the first series. After that, we'll do it next year. We'll do another one. But there'll be audits as well as uh, gap financial reports being done by another third party. So we we have a consistent um, flow of our finances being reviewed, making sure that the opportunities that are uh, being listed are actually approved by our broker agent, which is Dalmar Group. If anybody's interested, you can search them up. They've worked with other um, fractionalized real estate platforms as well. Nothing with the crypto space, but you know that's that's where we're trying to solve a really hard problem. Um, and they they're just going to review all these opportunities before we actually list them. So everything does have to be compliant with the United States before we move forward on any opportunity. Uh, I hope I hope that helps. On the managed properties, you know, like if it's a third party managed, uh, we're just gonna have to work very closely with that management company to make sure that these properties are taken care of. Does your platform facilitate the entry of new construction projects into the blockchain space? And if so, what are the advantages of developers and tokenizing these projects? Yes. So the way that it works with, with the United States, and this is also kind of a sticking point for a lot of people with the United States, uh, we can't do business with individuals who are coming with opportunities. Uh, you would have to be selling the property outright to us, and then we would be listing the property, we would be going through our broker agents, we'd getting everything registered and, and compliant, then issuing out tokens and selling those shares. Um, and the idea is if you wanted to be a new construction and you wanted to sell us the property either during construction or after the completion, we could buy the property off of you and list by listing it on the platform, but it would be a transfer of ownership. You wouldn't be able to sell like half of it or you wouldn't be able to sell like 10 or 20% of it and then keep a percentage because the whole thing needs to be uh, grouped up into an entity, an, an LLC that can have shares distributed. So if you wanted to, what you could do, and there's no loss here on this, you could sell that property uh, to us. We would fractionalize it, tokenize it, and sell the shares. You can come on the platform as an individual and just buy the amount of shares that you want to keep. Uh, the money just kind of goes back to you. Now, is there a little bit of a loop? And is there a little bit of delay on where the money's at and where your capital's at? Yes. But you do get to kind of have the best of both worlds in that kind of scenario. Um I hope that answers your question on, on the construction projects. But we, we actually have one ourselves, which is our first one, which is the Belize Resort, the two buildings uh, on that land that we purchased on Ambergris K. So that is a new construction uh, project that, that we're putting together. Uh, are you open to partnerships for tokenizing properties that can be used for commercial activities? Uh, yeah, I've actually spoken to a few people that are trying to do the same thing. Again, ownership does have to be transferred but you would be able to um, facilitate something like that. Uh, if you wanted to own some of that property, you could do so, but I think I think what people really want is you have a business and you want, a commercial, you want to commercialize that property and you want to operate your business out of it. If you want to own any of it, you're going to have to buy it from the, from the sales or from secondary and being able to get it from individuals who want to offload their tokens. Um, but yeah, the, you, you can have the best of both worlds doing that, but you know, because of compliance, because of how the, just the rules are in the US, uh, we do have to have the ownership as we're di uh, distributing that out on the LLC then to the community who holds their, their individual tokens. Uh, let's see, what is the timeline? Will Whimsy be released this year? Uh, Kadelta, I'm a man from the community. What's up, man? Haven't seen you in a bit. Uh, timeline? 
I'm not going to give you a timeline. You know, you know, can't do that. But uh, this year is the plan. Uh, Whimsy should be live this year as soon as we finish uh, the audit and the securities. Once that's completed, we have full clearance to move forward. I'm already talking to our architect. We got the new architectural plans. Um, I paid out of pocket. It's 25K to, to get those going. And we're going to have the redesign of how things are going to be architected. I'm going to actually have a surveyor come back down and go through the land. And then we're going to have a foundation uh, engineer look through that and see if the dirt's good, what what kind of supports and materials we're going to need for for the construction project. So we're you know we're still we're still doing stuff in the back end, um, but for Whimsy to be fully live, definitely this year. Can't give you a timeline though. Uh, what are the tax implications for buyers investing in tokenized real estate assets through your service? Do you provide any guidance or resources on this matter? Yes. So we're going to have a whole learn section. So you'll be able to search very quickly on the platform um, and just, you know, you can type the word tax. It'll be fuzzy search. Or if you want, you can search through some of our articles. Uh, but realistically, what's going to happen is if you are receiving dividends, that's when you're going to receive a, a document. It's going to be a 1099 uh, uh, K form. And what that does is it just means that you've been paid out. And then we're going to have all the properties that you own um, listed on there. And that's just going to be the full transparency of you know what you own, what you've received, and uh, what 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 if, if, if what if anything you've earned. Um, that process it'll just be a form. If you got a tax representative, or if you're using like TurboTax, you can just say, "Hey, I have a 1099K," and then you can upload it from there. We will be issuing those out. Um, I'll be work. I'll be working with. Um, I just say my guy Rick, but <laughs> but he he is a he's doing our gap in financial reporting right now for the Form One A. Uh, but he'll also be working with us to uh, to get the 1099Ks out and, and, and done with all the properties. So um, as we're doing our finances, we'll be able to issue out um, that information, that documentation around taxes and time. And don't worry, it'll be it'll be pretty straightforward. You're just downloading a document and you can just upload it to another uh, solution or give it off to your tax guy. Uh, will you have some sort of ISPO or ICO? There is no current plans to do that as of yet. Um, reason being is an ICO is great to raise capital, um, but for Whimsy specifically, uh, it's not something that we have on the roadmap right now. Uh, we really want to focus on just getting all the legalities out of the way, because honestly, if you think about it, every single one of these properties is a form of fundraising. ICOs traditionally have just been for fundraising or ISPOs have been for you know, getting capital and kind of doing like a stock market kind of play with a token. Um, and re realistically, having a token for Whimsy doesn't make sense um, because every property is its own series of tokens. We're using fungible tokens, not NFTs. So it, it doesn't actually make sense to have a token um, issued out for Whimsy right now uh, because it just there, just, there wouldn't be a utility or use case for it. Now, I'm saying right now. In the future, most certainly there could be, uh, depending on some of the other things that we do want to do um, with the tokens, what we want to offer as opportunities on the platform and with some other things that we we have in, in store. Um, but I can't guarantee or say that there's going to be an ICO or ISPO anytime soon. All right, looks like I got all the questions. Thank you, thank you so much, everybody. Um, if you need anything, again, Find me on Twitter. You can, sorry, not Twitter, X. You can find me on X. You can hit me up in an email. I'm more than available. I'm very open to communicate as much as I can, except for timelines. Can't give you those. But for everything else, hit me up. I'd be more than happy to have a chat with you guys about whimsy, real estate, or just general BS. Don't worry about it. I'm open book. All right, everybody, I'll let you go. You have a good one. Stay safe. And I hope you guys keep on investing and you keep on winning. We're going to be seeing a bull run soon, and I hope it's going to be magical. Keep it whimsy, everybody.